Now, historically, federal fund rates have gone down. Uh, now, they've gone up uh, right here towards the end, just a little bit, uh, compared to what they were. We've always gotten better deals with our home refinance. Now, if you look at bank rates, bank rates like uh, checking, you, you, you rarely get uh, money back with checking these days, but with savings accounts, you do get some back, but they're based on these rates, so you're not getting much back at all these days. So, say you, say you get 001% back in your checking, or I'm sorry, in your savings account. The bank is taking your money and loaning it out in a credit card for 15, uh, almost 16% interest to almost 25% interest based on credit worthiness. And you know what my credit was like, I would have had the 25% rate. We've been offered credit cards for 33% rate. Uh, now, back then we weren't offered any, but now we're offered credit cards at 33% interest rate. That's highway robbery. That's, that should be illegal. Not only that, but the bank is paying you 0.001% on your savings account and making 25% interest off of that same money. Does that make sense? It shouldn't. I mean, it should make sense that why they're doing that. It shouldn't make sense to why we're doing that. That's not a good deal. Well, around this time, the bank offered us a secured credit card. What does that mean? That means I paid the bank $300 of my own money, then I paid the bank interest to borrow my own money back. Does that make sense? Paying interest to borrow my own money? Why would I do that? I would do that to build my credit. That's the only reason I would do that. And my credit needed building. Actually, my goal was to make enough credit to where I could live off of my credit for a two-week period and then pay it off every time I got paid. I'm going to give you some tips about credit that I wish I knew. Some of you may know this already, but some of you may not. And this is for those of you who may not know this. Never close your credit card accounts or your credit accounts after you've paid them off. If you close them, it will make your credit score fall. Part of your credit score is based on available money to loan, to loan, to borrow, and based on the fraction that you have borrowed. So you want the biggest available, and you want to borrow the least you can on that, or at least under a fourth, I think it is. So my goal was if I could get a credit card for $2,000, which to me was a huge goal at the time, because all I had was a secured card for $300, and I'm talking about an unsecured card for $4,000, or I'm sorry, $2,000. Then I could live off of it for two weeks and then pay it off when I got paid and I could do that every payday. It's called microcrediting. Well, there's other things that are called microcrediting. So um, this is one of them. If you borrow $4,000 a month for 12 months, paying it off every month, that's $48,000 that you've borrowed interest-free. If you make weekly payments for three months, it looks like a year to your creditors because you made weekly payments for three months. That's 12 payments. To them, it looks like a year of monthly payments. That's a secret. If you want to get your credit uh, fixed quickly, pay, make weekly payments for three months. So if you have a $400 bill, pay $100 each month or each week, and then that will be $400 a month. Don't wait till the last minute to pay your bills. I've always tried to pay my bills forward. I, you know, to me, money is a race. And uh, with paying off your debts and things. So I, I would, as soon as I got, the, they send you a bill a month before it's due these, you know, these days. So as soon as I got that bill, I pay it off. And that way, if I get behind a little, 
those bills are already paid in advance, and then I have a little wiggle room. Pay your student loans off first. I don't know why I didn't do this, but again, no one sat down and talked to me and told me these things. Most of your bills will fall off after seven years, and your credit will be really bad, you know, in the meantime, but pay your student loans first, because those will never go away. They'll be for the rest of your life. So make those payments. Pay them off as fast as you can. Uh, you know, if you can pay the minimum on some of the other bills, do that. Uh, there's only so much money that can go around. But, like if you're three or four years, two or three years from that falling off, pay the, pay the ones that are going to stay around forever. Um, do not declare bankruptcy, because that's going to extend that for that moment to ten more years. And that's not a good deal. I fell into the deferment trap. They said, oh, because of your finances and because of your children, you know, you, you can, you do, you can defer your uh, student loan payment, uh, and you can just pay zero now. Wow, that's great, that's a good deal, right? No, because the interest keeps building. I borrowed 30,000, and before I paid it off, it was over 60,000, it had over doubled. And, you know, at times I got grants to pay off like 4,000 or 6,000, but, you know, I paid those off, and a couple of years later, it was right back up to where it was before until I got the big grant. <laughs> and that paid most of it off, and then I got the second grant that paid off the rest, and I was completely paid off. So a lot of people say, well, I'm done paying that bill. Uh, I'm sure the credit card company, or the credit company will remove it off of my credit report. No, they won't. They don't care about your credit. Even though you've paid in full, they'll just leave it on. You have to write letters to credit agencies telling them to remove old negative credit reports. So if you have a bill paid in full, guess what? Go look, when I, when I, you know, when I finally learned how to look up my credit on freecreditreport.com or some other site, you know, I looked those up, I say, wait a second, I paid that one a long time ago. Why is that still on there? because the company's not going to remove it for you. So I had to write a letter telling them, this is paid, then you can remove this one. Well, they don't remove it automatically. They give the company 30 days to contest it, and if it's not contested, they'll drop it. So anyway, you got to write a letter to the company. This is a nifty little trick. Put your children on your accounts until they build their own credit. They'll get a great credit score right out of high school, right out of college. They'll borrow from your great credit score. Hopefully yours is good enough by the time they leave home. Um, the downside is, if you don't trust them, they could use some of that money on you. But if you do trust them, and if you've raised them right, you'll be able to trust them. They'll be able to start building their own credit, and then you can take them off of that account of yours, and they'll have plenty of accounts to have their own good credit. My parents never did this for me. I never knew about it, uh, but these are the things I've learned over the years.